management accounting, make versus buy, outsourcing, and limited resources. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our email address and our phone number and also another video related to some of the topics here, management accounting 12. Make versus buy decision basically means do I write a check for someone else to do something, to make something for me, or do I continue to make it myself? And what I need to consider is what costs will remain if I outsource this to somebody else? In other words, what costs won't go away? Those costs are typically fixed costs, something long term that's not going to go away for a while. Maybe a long term lease on a building. Maybe you've got somebody who has a contract with you that you have to pay salary regardless of where they're working in your organization. We've got some other considerations too. What revenue will I lose? Because not only does this entity create cost, it may also drive some revenue. So that's a consideration. Product quality. Will the product that I buy, that I write a check for, be of the same quality that I make myself? If not, customers might be disappointed. And also company morale. Will the productivity of my remaining employees go down if I shut down this operation and let go some of my employees. What about the productivity of those who remain? So flipping over to Excel we have three or four examples to talk about this issue. Here's the first one. Delta Airlines currently makes desserts for passengers. The current costs are listed below. We've got some variable costs, some fixed costs, and a total cost for each dessert we make of 25 cents. An Atlanta bakery has offered to supply the in-flight desserts for 21 cents each. Certainly cheaper than 25 cents. The question is, should Delta continue to make the desserts or outsource the process to the bakery? So this column talks about the cost savings from the outsourcing. So our variable costs of 14 cents will go away. Our supervisor's salary will not go away completely. We'll still have one cent there because we have a supervisor who will work somewhere else in our organization who, or who's under contract, so that cost will not go away. And the depreciation of our, bill, of our equipment won't go away either because we'll still own the equipment, so there is zero cost savings with, with equipment depreciation because we still own the equipment. There's one cent of the four cents of cost saving from the salary from supervisors. So we save 15 cents. We set on our question that we're going to pay somebody else. We're going to write a check for 21 cents. So outsourcing the product to the Atlanta bakery will actually cost us 36 cents. So we're worse off. And because we're worse off, we continue to manufacture in-house and have a cost of 25 cents. Here's a second example. Let's assume a company is going to outsource the human resources division and they're trying to make a decision on whether that makes sense. We've got a cost to outsource. We're going to write a check to somebody for $410,000. By eliminating the human resources department, we're getting rid of $390,000 in salary professionals. We have some overhead that we're getting rid of to the tune of $30,000. So it looks like a cost savings of $10,000. There are two costs below here that will continue but are not relevant to your decision. So we have some administrative assistants who earn a total of $120,000. Well, they can be used elsewhere in the organization. That's still a company cost, so it's not relevant. It doesn't change. We have some corporate overhead that used to be allocated to human resources but will be picked up by other departments. Not relevant, still a company cost. So that's an example where we have to consider some costs that remain within the organization. What about lost revenue? Here's an example explaining lost revenue. Oceanside Interiors provides design services to residential and commercial clients, and so we're looking at the residential division. The residential services produce a contribution margin of 450000 They have a million dollars in sales less variable costs of 550,000. Here's our contribution cost 450,000. So there's some revenue going on here. 
they have traceable fixed costs of 480000 Management is studying whether to drop the residential operation. If closed, the fixed operating costs will fall by 370000 The question, what's the new net income? Well, bear in mind that this contribution margin will go away because if we're not selling anything, the sales go away and the variable costs related to the sales go away. So we're going to lose the 450000 contribution margin. We're going to gain from the 370000 in fixed costs that go away. That was explained at the end of the question. But you'll note that 110000 in fixed costs remain. So we're actually worse off if we close the facility. Because we're losing 450, dollars we're gaining only 370. dollars So instead of running a loss of 30000 keeping it open, we're running a bigger loss of 80000 if we close it. The last example is dealing with limited resources. Let's say that we have a piece of machinery and we're trying to figure out how do I use the machine to maximize profit, that should say profit, not product. And the question is really, as I put it on the uh, PowerPoint slide, what do I get, where do I get my biggest bang for the buck? So let's use this example here. We've got product M is in Mary and N is in Nancy. And we have a contribution margin for each. And we also see that that unit produces, has a certain number of hours required for each one. So a contribution margin of five requires two hours to make a unit of product. This has a contribution margin of 5.7, but it costs, it takes three hours to make the product. So if I look at N, M's contribution margin per hour, it happens to be five dollars a unit divided by two hours. Each hour I'm making 250. For product N is in Nancy, we have 1.9, which is if I click on the cell, the 5.7 contribution margin per unit, but to make one unit it now takes three hours as opposed to two hours. So when it's all said and done, M has a higher contribution margin per hour than N is in Nancy. We have 31,000 hours available, so we decide, well, let's max out product M. And specifically, if demand is 6,500 units, let's throw all 6,500 units into production first. So we're going to use 13,000 of 3,100 hours available. We multiply that by 5 units we produce times contribution margin per unit we make 32,500. 31,000 hours less the 13 gives us 18,000 hours left to make product N as in Nancy. Divided by three hours a unit we make 6,000 units multiplied by the contribution margin. We get our total contribution margin in dollars. We add those together we get our total contribution margin. So we found out the way to maximize profit was to figure out which machine was more profitable. Here's our slide that shows the limited resources. Machines, equipment, vehicles, factories all have a limited amount that you can use them. We figure the highest profit per hour or mile, and then that we use that to prioritize which thing we do first. That's the end of Management 17. You can find Essential Topics in Management Accounting, our three-hour course using GoToMeeting.com. Here's all of our information, website, YouTube channel, email, and phone number. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.